What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be diving on into Dismantle. The 1.0 version of the game is out. I don't think I've covered this game in a very, very long time. I think I checked it out back in like maybe even 2019. I'm not entirely too sure in all honesty. I got to go back and do the old Google Foo to figure it out. But anyways, I streamed it about a year ago just to kind of like check the game out and see what had developed with it. If you've never seen this game before, it's a top-down survival zombie apocalypse game. It's a little bit more streamlined than like Zomboid or any of like the hardcore simulators. And so this one has kind of a slick veneer over the top of it, which I think some people will find to be like a little bit mobile -y, But other people will also kind of like it because it gets rid of a lot of the minutia in favor of a very clear sort of progression through the game. And so anyways, we're going to dive on in, spend about 25-30 minutes with the game. See if it's something you wanted to add to your wish list or pass on. If after watching this, you did indeed want to get the game for yourself or wish list it, I'll have a link for you down below that's going to be right next to my discord and my twitch stream just in case you wanted to swing on through and say hello live in person let's go we've got limited time so we've got emojis for what our character is thinking okay all right it's modern i don't know if i love it but you know what i'm gonna leave it on because i haven't emojinated in a while uh i still you know i'm kind of like out of date here like i still actually type the smiley out on my keyboard like og aim style like back in the day okay i still have like an encyclopedic knowledge of how to make emojis out of just like various daggers and things on my keyboard all right uh, clock format set to military time yeah it seems all right looks like they've got accessibility implemented too for like a colorblind mode all right well let's start our adventure i'm feeling adventurous this is an automated recording sent from k23 the crown station everyone will be provided a safe transit as soon as possible we all do what we must just to survive just to exist when our society started to collapse, I was prepared. My underground shelter was filled with food and supplies. But that was years ago. Nothing's left now. I have no idea what awaits me at the surface. But I can't stay here. All I know is that there's supposed to be an evacuation site to the east. I need to get there. I need to escape this wretched island. I mean, if you're on an island, chances aren't, like, too bad that things have just kind of blown over. This doesn't look too bad. Yeah, I guess not. So, we can move around with the WASD keys. Whose camp is this? Well, it's mine now. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, hold on, hold on. Where's my, there we go. I need my mouse. I couldn't find my mousey boy. It looks like we picked up a little bit of scrap metal right there. Can I break that? Can I break these rocks? Nope, I can't break those rocks. I'm already getting into crafty boy mode. Light the fire. Bonfire lit. Okay, so apparently I can camp right here, and that looks like it banks my resources inside the crate. Honestly, I have very little recollection of this game, I'll be honest with you. Uh, it looks like if I have scrap metal and wood, I can upgrade my crowbar, and it looks like if I have plant matter and fabric, I can upgrade my pack pack. Okay. Sounds good. Well, then I guess we'll get moving on that. Can I break this chair? Yeah, get wrecked, chair. Yup, that chair didn't even know what was coming. We've got XP that's going into a level up there, so apparently we've got some RPG mechanics going on. What does that say? Well, yeah, dude, I figured out that I could click to, like, smack a thing with my crowbar. I'm well acquainted with the martial art of Gordon Fu. All right, let's go ahead and smack this over here. Perfect. We've got a little bit more wood. Uh, we've got... Oh, it stacks inside of our inventory. Nice. Let's see here. So we have a quest. Two scrap metal, five scrap wood, upgrade my crowbar, and destroy the dresser. Okay. Sounds like something I can more than likely accomplish. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of this barbecue over here. That Weber's going to suffer my wrath. Let's carry it on down to the camp. Everything's been banked, so it looks like we got a little bit of XP right there. And then I should have the stuff. Ah, oh, dude, I need one more wood. Okay, well then I will go and track down my wood. You know, I, I was going to give the table a pass. Oh, it's the chair that I was supposed to get. Okay, well let me murder the chair real quick. I do like the little icons that fly on out, but I can't help but wonder, like, if they had just had, like, little boards and stuff fly out in 3D, if it wouldn't have looked a little bit better. We'll go ahead and camp those up real fast. All right, so let's upgrade our gear right here. We got, oh, I got to hold it down. Okay, it's a click and hold type deal. 
Gotcha. Well, our, our Kroby has been upgraded, so we should be able to bar with the crow much harder than previously. Can I now break these? I can. The barrels are now destructible. I probably should have paid a little bit better attention to... Oh, the objects don't actually suck into your character. Okay, so like you've actually got to go around and collect them. Gotcha. I would like to see some kind of suction effect added to them, where if they're like nearby within like three or four feet of your character, they just zoop straight up the pooper. Uh, the way is now open. I will claim my reward. Thank you for the 600 XP. I appreciate it. What stuff is destructible inside of here? Anything interesting destructible? There's our plant matter for our backpack upgrade, so I'll probably work on that because it does seem like we're operating from an area of like very, very limited inventory space. And so I just, I feel like it's probably a good idea to bank this stuff. Go ahead and wipe this out. I'm sort of curious if the mobs are going to come back whenever I light a campfire. I can't recall if that was a thing the last time I played the game, like if it had like a little soulsy thing going on. I can search that right there. It looks like that's just going to be some scrap metal though. I'm going to carry on. Maybe there will be another camp out here. Oh look, a zombo. All right. A melee-oriented ex-human that finds strength in numbers but is relatively harmless by itself. Yeah, but it's got pencils for fingers, man. You should see the things it's going to write about you. Is there like a... Okay, there's a dodge roll. Gotcha. So, like, I can kind of, like, get in there and smack that thing around. Smack that thing up. All right. Well, let's take a look around and see if there's another campfire, like, in the vicinity anywhere. It's not that far to walk to go light the one that we already found, but, you know... Actually, this would be a good time. I'm going to go back and test if the things respawn. They do indeed respawn. Okay, so I tested it. We have now verified that indeed they do respawn. It doesn't look like you get any backstab damage or anything for, like, hitting an enemy that's all unawaresies of you. But maybe that's, like, a perk or something we're going to pick up a little bit later. I can't help but notice the zombies are dropping fabric, which is what we need to upgrade our stuff. It said to go to the east to, like, verify whether or not... Oh, another campfire. Sweet, dude. It said to go to the east in order to verify... Oh, nice. We got even more right there, too. Another campfire, but nobody in sight. Okay. We'll light that bad boy up. Uh, do I have the stuff? How many cloths did I need to upgrade my backpack? I needed 10 plant matter. I feel like I can probably acquire that pretty easily. I've got uh, visual confirmation on plant matter that's in the vicinity. I think we're going to be okay. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll check this place out, see what we can scavenge, see what we can search. Yep, pull that all off of there. I think I needed like four more of it. There is another zombie over there, and they do appear to have, like, a little awareness meter. So as we make noise, uh, there's a chance they'll come over and investigate. Okay. Good things to know. Yeah, I'd rather not deal with you inside, like, a tight, confined space. I'm just going to try not to get greedy and go for, like, the multi-swing, because I feel like that's going to be, like, a path to the dark side. And me getting absolutely cinnamon toast rocked, like, right here at sort of, like, you know, we're at the jump-off point for the episode right now. And I just don't feel like getting wrecked on camera today. We've got another quest over there. I'll probably verify and grab that. But go ahead and give me... Oh, and so our stuff stacks up to six now. Okay. Cool. Well, we got an extra inventory slot, so that's good. Find a map at the Link Tower, upgrade your backpack, and level up. Okay, uh, I think I I think I think already upgraded the backpack. Looks like I can break this, man. It's been a long time since I've seen one of these square laundry hangers over here. These, uh, like the the little, I don't know, the little, I don't even know what you would call those. Like, it's like a, it's a laundry line, but those square ones right there. My grandma had one when I was a kid. The dog is not home. This is the worst timeline. Verified. There was no dog, he is not home, and I cannot cuddle his face off in order to reassure him that everything is going to be okay. I no longer want to exist in this post-apocalyptic world. Nope, 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 nope. Okay, I'll get you. And then finish her off right there real fast. We're going to need the fabric anyways. I do like that it's tracking my upgrade. I'm curious if I go back to the campfire, if I can actually pin things so that they all stay kind of on the little sidebar right there. All right, let's take a look around. So we've got this linky thing over here. Let's linky thing it on up. Did it work? Do I have access to, like, all of the radio stations? 
Uh, that's a big map, bro. That's like, uh, that's a beef lord of a map right there. I feel like when I played this game in the first early access, it was just like a couple of these little quadrants right here. That's a lot. Okay, uh, open the east gate. The gate is sealed until you eliminate nearby threats. Gotcha. Okay, well, I could probably get down on that. Oh, we leveled up, too, so apparently doing the link towers gives us a bunch of XP. Okay, this is plastics. Yeah, it's gonna be plastics right there. Uh, you, we can, we can do an honorable crowbar duel. That's right, I've trained my whole life to crowbar fight a lady in a parking lot of a Wawa. There we go, I'll wipe you out. Like, to be honest, though, like, are you really living a fully fulfilled life if you haven't crowbar fought a lady in the parking lot of a Wawa? Like, it's one of those rites of passage that I feel like we are all eventually going to have to do. You know what I mean? Like, I've done it. My children will do it. So on and so forth. I am going to search this car. Is there anything good inside of there? I mean, cloth is solid. I'll take cloth. What else you got? What else you got for me? We do need wood, so maybe I'll scavenge up some wood. Oh, I leveled up while I was farming. Nice. So apparently I can do inventing and crafting now. And it looks like we've got kind of a small little crafting tree right here. I don't know if there's going to be multiple trees. Somehow I doubt it since these go up to like level 40. But we do have some stuff that we can work on. Uh, so we've got backpack plus one. That's a feature. We've got a cooking pot over there. It looks like we've got a jeans and jersey up this way. At level three, it appears as though we're going to get something. Uh, the real thing that's available right this second is throwing knives. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and track that, and we will make the throwing knives after we get done with the backpack. All right, well, I've got throwing knives now. I went ahead and crafted those. Let's go see if we can clear the threat from over on the right. I'd like to, like, pick up all my loot sort of organically, I guess, instead of just, like, sitting around farming. Although I sort of get the feeling that's kind of what they want, is for you to sort of just tool around the map, breaking stuff down, and working on your own little sub-objectives. Let's go see what's up with this guy to the east. So we've got, what is in here? Anything good? Some fabric. I mean, I need fabric, so I'm not going to turn up my nose at it. There's a bathtub over there, just in case you wanted to get down on, oh, God. I do wish there was a little bit more to the combat. Like, it seems like it's mostly just dive in, one tap, dive out. Uh, it'd be cool if there was, like, parrying and combos and things like that. Like, a little bit more depth to the combat, I guess. Especially since it seems to feature so prominently at the forefront of the game. It looks like I need 30 damage to break the bathtub. I'm gonna guess that those explode. Is it going to, like, light on fire on its own? Oh. Wait, he throws the knife to the facing of the character instead of towards the mouse? Oh, that's not acceptable. Yeah, he should definitely throw the... Oh, there's a timer on it. Okay. I get my knives back whenever I camp and rest, so just keep that in mind as well. We did get a nice little stack of loot out of there, but it looks like he throws the knife wherever the character is, like, facing instead of to the mouse. I'm going to have to verify a little bit further and test it, but it definitely felt like the knife was not going to the mouse, and that's one of those things that it should definitely go to the mouse. The false gatekeeper. I don't know. He looks pretty true to me. <laughs> like, he's pretty big. Is, he, is his mouth made out of, like, severed hands? Hold on. Uh, we absolutely can get past the gate this way. Okay, so he's got, like, a little poo belch right there. Is that, like, all that he does? Is he just lays down, like, the slime? Okay, well, then I guess I'll work on him for a little bit that same old classic way that I've been working on him. It doesn't look like he has any attack variations or anything else like that. That would have been one of those things that I would look for, is, like, I'd like to see him have, like, a couple different things that he does. Oh, he does do something different. Okay. He can kind of do like a heavy metal spit up into the air. And it looks like that provides us with an opening to really get some damage off. Okay. Well, the false gatekeeper is going down right now. He had an easily recognizable pattern that even a scrub lord like me could identify. So I think he's in trouble. Is he going to do anything else? Yeah, I'm just going to get you right there. If I get slimed, like, fair enough. But that gate's going to come open. I want to see what's through the gate. You can't just, like, close me off inside of a wall and expect me not to check it out. A blue eye orb, a peculiar round and smooth orb that is brimming with power. Can I, like, go up to the top of a mountain and hold it over my head 
and be like, I've got the power. And then like have lightning strike it or something. I just, I feel like that would be a really cool thing if I could do that sort of Highlander style, but with the desiccated ripped out eyeball of a giant fat zombie. Like I just, I feel like those two things have appeal. Hey, can I break down the bed? Nope, can't break down the bed. However, I can search that, and there's fabrics inside of there. What's in here? I need a cooking pot to start working. Okay, I don't have the cooking pot yet because it requires more ceramics than I currently had on hand. I do have a big grip of ceramics right here that I can play around with, but let's go ahead and drop this stuff off at this campfire. I don't know if the big guy is going to actually come back. You think the big guy is going to come back? I don't know. There's another quest over here. What do you want from me? What do you want from me? Uh, this world seems dangerous to survive. You need to further equip yourself. Okay, I already made the, uh, I already went ahead and made the throwing knives, so let's knock out the quest real fast. I do like the satisfying little ticky-ticky noises you get when you drop off your resources. That's pretty good. Now, let's invent and craft, and we've got a Link Tower toolkit, apparently, has now been unlocked at level 7. Alright. Does that just increase the amount of knives that I have? Is that what's going on here? So with 15 and 15, we can take that up to the next level? Okay. Uh, yeah, let's go ahead and throw that onto our tracking. I do appreciate that they give you the tracking for checking out your stuff. Uh, let's go ahead and we'll get that done right there because that gives us a quest finish. Does that just add a pot to every stove or, like, how does that work? I don't have to carry it around with me, do I? It looks like we can get different hats and it looks like we can get different outfits as well. And from what I recall, I think I remember one of the developer updates saying that there was, like, snow maps and stuff like that uh, where you had to kind of... There, there was snow maps and things of that nature where you have to have very specific gear in order to enter without getting, like, laid out. Uh, we do need more wood. I think, like, the crowbar upgrade is a really, really strong idea right now. Oh, cool, we've got a baseball cap. Nice, so I can go to my campfire and invent something. Sweet. Hmm, there's a new zombie up here. Oh, there's, like, a lock-on mode. I see. Okay. So, like, it, it locks onto him, and then you can throw stuff at him. Gotcha. So he's a hurler. That makes sense. He did seem to hurl quite a bit. A tomato. Okay, so apparently we can find food and things around as well. Can I break the toaster? I was going to say, I'd like to break like some of the stuff in here for metal. And we're kind of hard up on metal right now. And if I want to get any like real tangible upgrades done, I think the metal is going to be vital. However, we do have a backpack upgrade coming up pretty soon too. If I can get like one more fabric... I'll take the I'll take the ceramics just because you never know. Is there anything searchable inside of here? Doesn't look like it. Okay, let's keep on free roaming. We're gonna cut on out this way and see what we can find. We've got another hurler over there. He isn't actually near anything that I'm interested in. Uh, I'm looking for anything that I can loot inside of a house that will give me a little bit of fabric. We don't have a lot of HP right now either, which is actually an observation. I need a lockpick in order to get inside that house, huh? Okay, fair enough. Uh, we got a couple of fabric right there, so now we're ready to rock with our new backpack. So let's go get that done. It does feel like there's a good pacing to acquiring new things here in the beginning of the game. Uh, with the size of the crafting, oh, we actually get a new skill. So I can get more HP, I can get more carry slots, or I can get more XP. Let's go ahead and take the HP because I feel like I'm, I'm, I don't have a stiff chin. I'm kind of like Glass Joe out here right now, and it just it concerns me. So I've got my backpack. Let's go ahead and upgrade. Okay, so now we have eight slots, and it looks like things stack up to six. So that will be helpful. With the cooking pot, adds one ingredient to the slot, which allows new cooking recipes. Is there like a... I guess I probably have to learn some... Oh, there's a bag of blood. Why would I want that? Fresh reserve of blood to keep hemoglobin levels stable. It's a trinket. Oh, so I can, like, equip it? Or does it just... Oh, yeah, you've got trinket slots over here. Okay, so that would give me another 5 HP. All right, fair enough. I will keep that in mind. It looks like they've actually itemized the game a little bit since the last time I played. Like, when I streamed it a while back, there was a gear progression or whatever. But it seems like they've added a few more things to it just to make it, like, a little bit better. I need to open that gate. Let me go back and I'm going to smack this lever real fast. All right. Open up my east gate for me. I went ahead and I took care of business. 
I deserve this reward like the Truman Show. I'm going through the wall. I should head to the evac site. I can always come back later. Yeah, it sounds like a plan to me. There's also a west gate that we need to deal with right about now that I haven't gotten around to, but maybe someday. Your inventory does expand fast enough that I'm kind of, like, happy with it. Like, I, if I had been stuck with my inventory at the default size that it was for too long, I feel like the game would have annoyed me on a certain level. But, like, honestly, the inventory upgrades are pretty easily accessible. You guys know my feeling about inventory systems. I personally have always felt like uh, inventory systems... I, I like games where you can just carry infinite stuff. I'll be honest with you. Uh, Gothic, that's a game that did it just right. Just let me carry all the stuff. If I want to carry around 950 halberds and 35 suits of chainmail in my backpack, you let me do it. Looks like we've arrived at a new location. And apparently he wants me. That's, the, that's what I'm hearing from this statue right here. He's got the three-piece on, though, dude. It's always a good idea. You should always rock the three-piece. That's just my opinion when it comes to fashion. You always rock the three-piece suit, man. There's nothing quite like a vest to really, like, tie a suit together. Like, I personally don't think I will ever wear a suit that's not a three-piece. I don't own a suit. But someday when I do own a suit, maybe, just maybe, the three-piece will be with me. So some of this stuff is breakable over here. I don't know how much plant matter I'm actually, like, inherently going to need. But let's look around and see what scrap and whatnot we can find from the neighborhood. All right, there's some zombies down here. I'm okay with squaring off with some zombies real fast. I mean, I'd prefer to have kind of like an upgraded crowbar because I do feel like I do a lot of, like, hacking and smacking before they go down. But there's one. All right. Didn't take that second hit, too, which I'm actually really thankful for. And she gave me a bunch of scrap metal, so, like, I'm down with that, too. I don't think I can break down cars with a crowbar. That might be sort of a tall order. But I do like the sort of free-roaming aspects of it. They give you little prompts and whatnot to sort of inch you in the right direction of, like, where you want to be at. And it is tracking our temperature right now. So I assume at some point we are going to have to kind of adapt to either certain maps will have certain temperatures or the other thing that could happen is that there is seasonal change. Uh, and it is tracking what day we're on right now, so it's possible that there's kind of a cyclical wep or a weather system that we're going to have to be jockeying with, but, like, it's hard to say at this point in the game. Either way, I'm fine with farming some metal out of the faces of these zombies over here. It's also a really nice acquisition. What does this say? Bowel Lake? Wait, what? Bowel Lake Camping Grounds. You named it Bowel Lake, huh? Kind of a interesting name for a lake there's got to be a story there that's one of those things that's definitely named like when i was growing up i grew up in a place that is called like cowtown that was like the uh, that was the that was the the nickname for my town and like it's because it used to be a cattle ranching town like 200 years ago and that's what it's named after it used to be a pony. It used to be like the last Pony Ex Express stop, too. That's what the entire town actually grew up around, is that it was a tiny one-street Pony Express town. And then just, like, a city grew around it. And now, like, 150 years later, it's a city with six-figure people. Like, 100, 120,000 people living there. Well, I found another campfire out by Bowel Lake. I don't know if it's, you know, the kind of place that's going to be helpful, but... Looks like there's some little cabins and things out here, so we might as well investigate them. What do we have inside this right here? Okay, some ceramics. I'll take that. These chairs right here are fantastic, because they give you both fabric and wood. Those are like the money chairs right there, in case you were wondering. It does seem like a significant proportion of your gameplay is just going to be like smacking objects to get resources out of them. That seems to be one of the main draws. I guess you sort of just do it like you're grazing. As you move around the map, I think I left some cloth inside of here, too. And you can never have enough cloth. There we go. We'll get a few more scrap cloths. All right. Well, it looks like we've got quests back this way, and we've got quests up and to the right. So I think what I'm going to do, we don't have, like, the ability to kill deer yet. So we're going to need some kind of new utility or upgraded weapon to make that happen. I wonder what happens, like, if I dodge, like, forward. Oh, they do turn a little bit to take a swipe at you, so that might not actually be a strategy that pays off massive dividends. Well, actually, I got two swings off when I dodged straight through them, so, like, maybe it'd be worth investigating. I don't know. Can I zoom out the camera any further? Is that, like, an... 
option that I can fiddle with right there? Because actually, that's what I... Oh my god, what is that thing? Oh my good sweet lord baby Jesus, what is that thing? Ow. No, don't use the knife on her. Don't throw a knife away either. Lock on, lock on. Yeah, it seems like the prevailing strategy is sort of just duck in, duck out. Apparently, that thing is called a chaser, and I think that definitely makes sense. There is, like, a strategy to it, though, because if you noticed, if you try to run from that monster right there, she gets free hits on you. So, like, her na her nomenclature is good. Like, she's a chaser. Like, you've got to stand your ground with her, otherwise bad things are going to happen. And so, anyways, I kind of like that. So, yeah, my observations as of right now is I'd like to see a little bit more variation to the combat. I'd like to see some combos in there. I'd like to see the enemies have different attack patterns and whatnot. Uh, maybe a stamina meter to keep you just from, like, spamming dodge all the time. Just something to inject a little bit more structure to the combat itself. As far as the scavenging and moving around the map goes, it seems like we have a lot of map to play around with. So if you're looking for kind of a free-roaming experience, you'll probably find something to like here, especially if you're into crafting and whatnot. Uh, I do like the way that you can pin things, and I think the UI is nice and customizable, although some of the little quest prompts over here are a little bit intrusive as far as the UI design goes. I do think that the addition of like a parry or something like that would have really helped with the context of the game as well. Uh, that way you would have like perfect parries and whatnot, something to focus on to sort of break up the monotony of dodge in, dodge out, swing. Uh, just little things like that I think would have been really, really good ideas to like stun enemies with a parry and then they could have different types of equipable parries. So like one of them does an AOE that knocks everything around you back but for less time. One of them's a focused parry so like the one guy you perfect parried gets stunned for way longer uh, but it's got like a longer cooldown on parrying or something like that. Just little intricacies they could have added to the combat to make it pop a little bit better. I think that's like the main thing that's jumping out at me right now is the combat is very, very simple. Uh, but they do seem to have a large world here, and there seem to be a lot of things to work on. Let's take a look at the options menu and see what that's got going on. So inside the options menu, inside gameplay, we can get rid of screen shake. That's fantastic. I like that. Uh, the freeze frame effect can be enabled or disabled. We've got tutorials enabled, disabled. We can make the game pause while not in focus. We can make it so the minimap rotates or doesn't rotate along with your character. Uh, you can change around the units. Looks like we can store our materials when resting. Apparently, we can turn on and off friendly fire from co-op. Okay, and player collisions can be turned on and off too. Okay, so that's kind of cool. Inside the controls, it looks like we can invert the Y-axis. We can toggle with the run. Yeah, I would say auto-lock enemies maybe. That would probably help out with the knife throwing. I'll give that a try, but it looks like we can re-key bind everything, so that's really, really good. Inside the audio mixer, not a whole lot going on there. Not a whole lot going on there. Uh, so, like, you've just got sound effects and music. That's pretty much it. However, it does have the option for streamers to disable copyrighted music, which is good. Inside the graphics, it looks like we've got V-Sync. It looks like we've got Render Scale, which is basically how tight the textures look, uh, what resolution the textures are going to render at. We've got the UI scaling, so actually I could bring that down a little bit, and that might fix my problem with the journal being intrusive on the left-hand side. It looks like we've got Particle Details, Dynamic Shadows. We've got Anti-Aliasing for rounding things out. We've got the Bloom Filter. Some people very much do not like Bloom or Film Grain or Vignette. If you don't know what Vignette is, it's kind of the little... It's the black borders on the corners right there. And then depth of field can also be gotten rid of. Inside of accessibility, we've got colorblind mode. Uh, you can reduce the blinking effects, apparently, just in case you've got any type of, like, seizures or light sensitivity. And then apparently there's trypophobia triggers as well, which is actually an option that I've never seen in my life. Uh, if you don't know what trypophobia is, don't Google it. It's I, it's the fear of holes, all right? that's It's the fear of holes. And so anyways, there's your options menu. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so you don't have to. Today we're checking out Dismantle, a rather sprawling open world zombie survival game. Like, that that's the thing I keep coming back to is how huge this map is. 
Like, that's a really large map for a little indie game. And so anyways, I'm sure there's all kinds of cool stuff out there that you can go and explore. And I do like the fact that it tags objectives like locked doors and whatnot for you so that once you actually have the supplementary tools and utilities to enter those areas, you can recall that they're there. Because honestly, I have a really bad memory. I'm not going to remember where the locked door is. That's just facts. I'll see you all next time. Thank you for stopping on in. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you with something hot and fresh off the indie skillet tomorrow.